Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, is a motor neuron disease that impairs the body's ability to communicate with the muscles. Over time, the disease causes paralysis and the loss of the ability to walk, talk, eat, swallow, and unfortunately breathe. Currently, more than 200,000 people worldwide are living with ALS, with an estimated 3,000 of them Canadian. Every day, two to three people die in Canada because of ALS. Scientists have identified mutations in the gene SOD1 to be linked to familial ALS, a form of ALS that affects approximately 10% of all ALS patients. Last year, a study published by Gadgetel reported to successfully fix the mutations by using a gene editing technology called CRISPR-Cas9 in mice that have ALS. The CRISPR tool was delivered by injection and acts like a pair of molecular scissors that goes through the genome, find the mutation, and corrects it. Let's take a look at how ALS experts think about it. My name is John Turnbull. ALS is a poorly understood disease that affects voluntary muscles, and as a result, uh, any muscle that you can voluntarily move can and probably will become affected and indeed paralyzed uh, as the course of ALS progresses. Hi, I'm Vladimir Lucic. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Kinesiology at McMaster University. And our laboratory studies the mechanisms that regulate the maintenance and remodeling of the neuromuscular system in health and disease. ALS, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, is a uh, progressive and severe health and life limiting neuromuscular disorder. The most popular drug treatment is a drug called Rilazole and it's marginally effective at best. More effective treatments are things like breathing support, nutritional support. Another treatment that was uh, approved uh, very recently, within the last uh, year or so, called Radicava, also is thought to work through uh, a similar kind of mechanism, uh, that is the, the reduction of oxidative stress uh, within muscles and nerves. It's very difficult to treat because we don't understand it. So we don't understand why people get ALS, and we don't understand once they have ALS, why well, they uh, decline either quickly or slowly, uh, poorly understood and untreatable from that point of view. The mechanisms that result in the appearance and progression of the disorder are very complex. And furthermore, the etiology of the disorder uh, is largely unknown. The SOT1 gene encodes a protein called superoxide dismutase. Uh, which is a very powerful antioxidant within the cell. Because we know that SOD1, many mutations to the SOD1 gene can result in ALS, many different gene therapy approaches are being studied to try and um, uh, manipulate the gene or manipulate the, uh, what's produced from the gene in order to reduce the uh, progression and severity of the disease. I don't think there is a major breakthrough right now. As of yet, we don't have uh, good treatments for any even of the known genetic abnormalities. They seem to be coming, uh, but whether they're as effective as people think they might be or not is unclear. Uh, CRISPR has been a breakthrough in many fields, not only in uh, for neuromuscular disorders, but uh, that technology has the potential to uh, affect uh, gene-based and cell-based technologies to affect uh, genes that are thought to be involved in the etiology of different neuromuscular disorders. Uh, these genes can be excised from the genome or they can be manipulated in such a way that uh, reduces the appearance of these toxic factors that lead to the appearance and progression of ALS. The tools are much more different, uh, much better, much further refined. Uh, stem cells have uh, come to the fore and that technology didn't exist before. 
We have the wherewithal to correct genetic mutations in many of these uh, in many of these diseases. For example, we didn't we didn't know that C9 or S72, which we now know accounts for the majority of ALS causing mutations that we're aware of uh, that hadn't been discovered yet. I usually say that there's a lot of work going on all over the world and that a cure could come tomorrow. There is hope that a cure will be found or that significant treatments will be found and that's the way I usually approach it. I don't know when we're going to find a cure for, for ALS but I'm optimistic that uh, we will find one. Although there's still much to do, much work to do for ALS, uh, I'm confident that because we have good people working on it, we will be able to address the many different types of ALS in the future. They're a wonderful group of people. I mean, these are people that are usually very courageous in the fate of a, of a fatal disease and uh, it's actually wonderful to see how adaptable and how resilient the human spirit to persevere what I mean by that is in in our business uh, many days go by where there's no news or there's bad news we have to keep working we have to stay optimistic through those days. We have to celebrate the, the good news that we get every so often. When that happens, it's, it's motivating and inspiring.